The point I wanted to make, though, was that CLS, Community Living Services in Wayne County, convinced Jerome to move from a subsidized apartment to a private apartment with a housing assistance payment to the purchase of a home. And the documents in that mortgage say CLS is providing uh, out of $4,200 monthly income all but $600, which was Jerome's SSI. The rest of it was CLS. That was the basis for that monthly mortgage payment of around $900, which obviously Jerome couldn't afford because his total income a month was less than $700. Right? So the only way he could qualify for that mortgage was because of the involvement of Wayne County CLS. Now, when Jerome moved into this house, he found that there were some issues. He was promised a house that was, would be wheelchair accessible. Uh, there was an entrance ramp. There were wider doors. There were problems with the bathrooms. He had no way to get down into the basement, and he didn't have uh, a ramp at the back of the house. There wasn't a second way out of the house. So Jerome is not quiet. Jerome is not a shrinking violet. <laughs> Jerome raised hell. He said, look, I moved in here. I got no ramp to get out the back. I got to have two exits and entrances to this house. I got, I got a basement I need to use. I got no way to get in the basement. I need a lift. So he fought those battles when he moved in. Uh, and he got the, the deck and the ramp in the back. And he had to sue uh, to get the funds on the construction to get the lift to go up and down the basement, but he's got a lift now. And there are still issues with the house, but Jerome, through his determination and his struggle, turned that house into his home. And Jerome, since 2004, has lived there independently and with dignity. And that's all any of us, most, all of us look for and want. And, and Jerome pulls his car into the garage, he gets into his wheelchair, he gets up the ramp, he can get down the basement, he lives in that home. Now, Jerome continued to struggle to make improvements to that home, to put all his efforts into uh, having the home truly be accessible. He got into arguments with CLS, and CLS management started to tell him, if you continue to make complaints, if you continue to ask questions, you're going to lose benefit. And that's what they set up, all right? And if you look through all the documents, you can see from 2005 to 2006, after Jerome was living in the house, that CLS made a change with the state, and they said Jerome, prior to that, had, uh, was eligible for a Medicaid waiver. And then after that, in 2006, they said he was no longer eligible for a Medicaid waiver. In other words, CLS made that shift. And in the long run, it cost Jerome benefits. It meant fewer benefits were available to him. The monthly mortgage payments continued to be made. Jerome paid his portion of the payment every month. As a matter of fact, CLS had it set up so that Jerome's monthly SSI check went to CLS, to Money Miners. Uh, they took out his portion of the monthly mortgage payment, which was $139 every month. And then out of that, Jerome got get, you know, additional money for food and utilities and so forth. And hell, it's not a lot, but that, that's the way it was set up. My point is, this whole program, this whole purchase of the home was set up and run by CLS and Wayne County, and Jerome agreed to that, and Jerome was participated in that, and Jerome was had a home because of that. Now, CLS eventually made good on his promise. Benefits were cut, and in 2009, CLS simply stopped paying their portion of the mortgage. So for those first five years, CLS has paid the balance of the mortgage each month, housing assistance payments for Jerome. So if the monthly payment was 900, Jerome paid 139, CLS paid 760 or whatever that balance was. Every month, straightforward, real simple. And then suddenly, 2009, CLS cuts them off. They stop the payment. And Jerome's been in a fight to prevent foreclosure ever since. The point I think we want to emphasize is that <coughs> promises were made, commitments were made, 
Jerome Jackson relied on those promises and commitments from Wayne County and from CLF. That is, he moved out of subsidized housing, he gave that up. He moved into private housing with housing assistance, he gave that up, and he moved into a home and purchased a home on the promise and the commitment of CLS and Wayne County to support him and assist him and to make sure that home ownership opportunities were available for poor people and people with disabilities. They have broken that promise. We need to hold them to it. And we need to say, we're not putting up with broken promises. We're not putting up with commitments you walk away from. We're holding you to it. We're not going any place. You will make Jerome Jackson stay in his home. You will allow him to continue to live independently in that home and with dignity. And we won't take any other kind of answer. The federal court case is Jerome Jackson versus Fannie Mae, PNC Bank, Wayne County Home Program, Community Living Services. We're in the middle of that fight. We know that this could be resolved with $30,000. That is, we've had two appraisals. We had an appraisal done, and CLS had an appraisal done. Because of the damn housing crisis, Jerome's house in Inkster now valued at about $30,000. So we know that with $30,000 we could resolve this. And that's exactly the amount of money that CLS failed to pay on Jerome's mortgage. In other words, the amount of money they were supposed to pay each month since 2009, which they haven't paid, adds up to $30,000. If they would honor that commitment, take that $30,000, we could resolve this matter with PNC Bank and Fannie Mae, and Jerome would have his house free and clear. And then we'd have the ongoing issues of assistance and support going forward. But that's doable. So we really need to put the pressure on Wayne County and CLS to resolve this, and to let Jerome rest easy and with dignity in his own home, and to know that we can have this resolved. And the last point I want to make is I was talking to the attorney for CLS, which is now uh, the insurance attorney. Uh, and this is a secret. But the first thing she said to me was, can you stop all the cards and letters and emails going to the Pecano and the Wayne County commissioners and all that? And I, of course, was perfectly honest and said, I got no control over it. And I said, Jerome has got a lot of support and broad support in the community, and that support is coming through. And so what I want to urge people to do, for one, is keep those cards and letters and emails coming and keep them coming stronger, and let's really put the heat on Pecano and the Wayne County Commissioners and everybody else we can think of to say, settle this case, keep Jerome Jackson in his home. And this fight is going to continue. And of course, it's not just the fight of Jerome Jackson. It's tied in with the damn mortgage crisis, the predatory lending crisis, which is why he got put into the house in 2004, <coughs> the collapse of the housing market and the housing crisis, which is part of why CLS can say we're not going to pay any more after 2009. And out of all this, the one thing we want to stand for is we want justice and dignity for homeowners, for people in our neighborhoods, for people in our communities, for people with disabilities, for all of us. And the only way we're going to get it in this society is to organize and stand together and fight like hell for it, because it's not coming any other way. Thank you.